Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. Today I have a couple of new uh, makes to share with you and sort of give you my take on the um, patterns. Um, I'm wearing them both today although you can't see the slip underneath but I'll show you pictures here in a minute. The, the shirt I'm wearing is actually called the Agave shirt, and this is from Fiber and Cloth Studios. I was talking to you about this last week when I made that um, Michelle uh, sort of poofy slip that I thought I was going to wear under this. You can see in when I get to the pictures here, you'll see why it wouldn't really work. This um, shirt, and I'm trying to remember what size I cut. I'll put it I'll, I'll put it down below here. Um, this shirt is a very straight cut front and the back has gathers all across the back. So it was just not the right shape to go over a bubble slip. However, I made a different slip. I was looking around for a slip that was just straight. Um, I have a couple that are more A-line, but because this shirt dress is so straight in the front, I really wanted something straight. So I found this one, which is the Inez slip, and this is from Homer and Howells. It's the first time I've ever used one of their patterns. In that slip dress, I made a size 12 and did absolutely no alterations, except I shortened it quite a bit. And um, the original slip has side slits, which I didn't need because I shortened it so much. So I just closed up what was left of, of the uh, side slits. So I'll show you the inspiration. This this picture here is my uh, is a picture from Rachel Comey. This was kind of my inspiration for this shirt dress. Um, and I'm not sure that this was really the right pattern for that look. However, I do really like this dress. Obviously. I made it with short sleeves. You can also make this either sleeveless or with long sleeves. I I don't know why I chose to make short sleeves. I don't really wear short sleeves. I usually wear sleeveless and then I'll put like something over it like a cardigan or something over it if it's cold or I'll make long sleeves and roll them up if it's like cooler weather. But anyways, for some reason I chose to make the short sleeve version. I'm not crazy about the short sleeves because they're a little bit wide and bellish. They look cute rolled up, so that's fine. I will say, let's go back to the um, agave pattern here for a second. Um, the instructions were really good. The sizing on this was, was perfect. I didn't do any alterations to it. In fact, to this one, I didn't do any alterations at all. Um, she does have a couple of clever little tricks for doing your um, yoke and enclosing everything. It's a, a, the burrito method, but it also includes this front edge somehow. I can't remember now, but oh, the facing, the facing here. Anyways, the, the video tutorial was uh, really helpful, and um, I don't remember having ever included the facing in a burrito method, so that was new to me. And it was very clever. I really liked that. Um, I have to be honest. I was a little disappointed in this make at first. Um, although it is now really growing on me. Uh, it could be that in, in my video, in my camera right now, this color of this linen looks brighter than it really is in real life. It looks more pink too. Anyways, it's like a purpley, orchidy kind of color, I guess. <laughs> I got this from Fabric Mart Fabrics earlier in the summer and I thought it was gonna be brighter. So I have a feeling that the reason I was not so crazy about this make in the first place is just because I wasn't nuts about the color. However, it is growing on me. Um, I do like the uh, style and size and fit of the shirt. You could also make this as a shorter, well, you can make it any length you want, obviously, but the pattern comes as a shirt or a shirt dress. Um, yeah, so I still wanted to wear a slip under this, so I made the Inez. The Inez that I'm showing you here is in a silk, um, 
mm, Shantong that I washed. Both of these fabrics, like because I was not crazy about this, the color of this fabric when I got it, and also because this silk fabric that I used for this came, it, it was like an old like remnant kind of that I got someplace and it had some spots on it. So I wasn't like hugely invested in either of these fabrics. So I just made these up and figured I would see how they went. So the Inez is in a silk shantung. It does have a few like weird spots on it, but you can, can't really see them and I am gonna wear it as a slip, so I think it's fine. Uh, I think the only other thing I would do to the Inez is, I, I think next time I'm gonna move the straps in about a half an inch. They're a little teeny bit wide. Um, I did, I, for, I forgot to say, I, I did do one other alteration to this. So the Inez dress or slip, whatever, has two options for finishing the edges. One is to bind them all, and the other one is to use a facing. The facing they give you is one of those, like what I would call a half lining. It comes almost down to the waist. I really hate those things. So I just cut that down to a regular size facing and stitched it down all the way around. Again, it's a slip, so I wasn't that concerned with having a stitch line. And even if it was a dress, I'm not sure that that would have mattered. I really don't like those half lining things. I think that they always get bunched up and weird. And if you throw them in the laundry, sometimes they dry wrinkly, like when you hang them to dry or something, they get wrinkles in them and then they don't lay flat under there. I don't, I just don't like them. Okay, so that is my agave shirt and Inez dress. And so far, I, I think I'm gonna really like this. I love this slip, it, I love the way it fits and um, I will definitely make it again. I'm not 100% sure I'll make the agave again. I, I might, I might not. I have this, fa the, the fabric I was originally going to use for this, and um, this, so before I made this one, which was more or less a wearable muslin, is this um, very lightweight cotton that I got from Bolt Fabric Boutique in Portland. Um, it is really lightweight, and because of that, I don't know that I would like this shirt in it. Um, maybe I would, I'm not sure. Anyways. I, my other option is to make the Collie shirt from Merchant and Mills, which I'll put a picture of here. So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think for the second one. Do I want to make another one of these just with long sleeves? Or do I want to make the Collie? I think this might be more suited to the Collie. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay. So while I was at the Homer and Howell's website, I also bought a pattern for a pair of pants called Maud. Um, I'll show you a picture from here. I thought these would be really good for fall and winter because they've got a slimmer leg. It says that they are fuller in the hips and thighs, so we'll see. I don't have the pattern yet. I just um, I just ordered it and had a, um, I sent it off to the printer, so I should have it in a couple of days. But I found a new to me fabric shop called La Finch Fabrics. They're out of Los Angeles. They kept showing up in my Instagram feed. I have to be honest with you guys, I have ordered a few things from people on Instagram, from companies on Instagram, and for the most part, they've been a complete disappointment. However, I decided it's a fabric store. How bad can it be? I checked out their website and I found this really cool. I know this is more pink, sorry. Um, really beautiful hot pink 100% cotton pinwheel corduroy that my plan is to use these to make those mod pants. Um, I did get a couple of other things from them. I got um, like a last piece of linen from them which is a nice medium weight linen and I got a piece of jersey from them also. I will say I thought their prices were very reasonable. Most of their fabrics seem to be um, dead stock. She does have a small selection of patterns and notions. Um, I would say, I, I think the prices were really reasonable. I think her shipping was average. It wasn't fast, but it also wasn't particularly slow. So if you're in the US and you wanna give them a try, I, I recommend them. I think that they, um, yeah, they had some good stuff. Okay. What else did I do? So, aside from making this, finishing this shirt and making the Inez slip, I had a couple of things that 
have been in my wardrobe for a while that I just was not really wearing or wasn't really crazy about. The first one is a hinterland dress. I, I don't have a picture of it from before. I made this probably a year ago. It's my first time making the hinterland dress and I disliked it so much that I threw it in the fix pile and walked away from it. Um, I, I will say the thing I didn't like about it is most is definitely the fabric. <laughs> It was a pink, but like a pale, mauvey gray pink. So last week I decided that I really should just do something with it. So I threw it in the washer with some dye and it's now this color, which is more of like a raspberry kind of color. It is still not an ideal color, but it is 100% better than it was before. Um, like I said, I don't have a picture from before, so I can't show you the color, but trust me, it's better now. I just like a, I like stronger colors on me. So this is definitely better, and I can definitely see myself wearing this now in the fall and winter, and I will definitely make another one because I really like this dress a lot. The next thing I did was, you know, here's a picture here of my uh, first Matchy Matchy Sewing Club collage gather dress. <laughs> Um, this is the one I made in the Merchant and Mills cobalt blue linen. And at the time, I thought it was way too long. The original dress was just way too long. I felt like, I said in the video, I said I felt like Friar Tuck because it was just like huge and overwhelming. So I cut it to this, which was like tunic length. And I wore it a few times and I felt like it wasn't quite right. So... I dug through my scraps and I pulled out the bottom part that I cut off originally and I sewed it back on and I shortened it like a couple of inches after that. And now it looks like this. And maybe because I have it on with boots and maybe just because I'm in a more fall sort of headspace, I really like it. Um, yeah, I like it much better this way. So. I think I might make another long one for fall. I'm not sure. You guys can see the comparison here. Let me know what you think. If you like it better shorter or if you like it better longer. I can still take that piece off and ram it. So it could be short again. But I think it's better longer. So actually I think that is it for me this week you guys. Thank you so much as always for stopping by. And until next week I wish you all happy sewing.